Yeah, You know the chop. Ayazahab. Ayazahab. Badness, badness, no sad. Let me tell you how the badness steer. Don't be bad fly when the clock is clear. Tell a boy, send no a try box this face. Box switch face. You know all your blood clock just kids to your boy. You must see one box this clear. When the map stick raise, black kids straight. Straight. You shot this place. The key to me now, your head stop this beer. This face. The key never tell us so we lock this place Which locks me anyway watch this place Why with them bunny like plastic plates hey? We don't play around When you see the UPK around We bring the fucking AK around AR-15s and AR rounds We don't play around When you see the UPK around We bring the fucking AK around AR-15s and AR rounds We don't play around When you see the UPK around We bring the fucking AK around AR-15s and AR rounds We not take trip up we not take pay it up, we not stay so I win the next day, come we not change up Man, I act them bad as them wake up Take care bus, boy, head top shake up So tell a pussy world well, don't violate us No care where you stay, trust where you take up Every man a kill a chill, miss a dead face up Straight up, great stuff One way sling, bigger than NATO Man we bust it to NATO Only man we free that, that are the creator, the maker Hey, we don't play around When you see the UPK around we bring the fucking AK around, AR 15s and AR rounds. We don't play around when you see the UPK around. We bring the fucking AK around, AR 15 and AR rounds. AR 15s and AR rounds. AR 15s and let, let me tell you how the badness steer. Don't be bad fly when the clock display. Tell a boy, send a try box this face. Box switch face. You know all your blood clock just kids to your boy. You must see one map this spray. When the map stick raise, that leak straight. Shot this place. The key to me now, your head stop this beer. This face. The key never tell us so we lock this place Which locks me anyway watch this space Why with them bunny like plastic plates We don't play around When you see the UPK around We bring the fucking AK around AR-15s and AR rounds UPK Who on West Babylon is falling, is falling to rise no more again Babylon is falling, is falling Freedom is here my friend, not just part of the vision Yeah, our shy never come bring peace in start of the vision So put your trust in our riches and welcome to our nation I just the last statutes and commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision I just part of the nation Daniel get a vision Him see the black Christ It wasn't a white depiction No allegiance to Rome nor its regions Come out them religion If you want be a free man Cause the deacons them full of demons Same situation with Rasta with Islam Holy beacon of hope for your lean And his UPK and the general Yana Every foul of the Ear. Every beast of the field, every creeping thing we creep on land Every mouth of the clear, loud and clear Yeah, our shy mashiach is a black man who has fear Let him hear, time to prepare Spiritually separate from Babylon We no weak, we no fear, wheat we no tear Come sad of my bum, but he man just part of the nation Yeah, our shy never come bring peace in start of the vision no put your trust in our riches and welcome to our ammunition Adjust the last statutes and commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision Not just part of the nation Send evils and curses From the poor city and the beasts and all churches America fall, them deserve it Rome get defeated to repeat another first thing hey, 400 years they work with Then desert with them turn round and call with worthless but now the COVID lurking, them hurting And then the doctors and nurses hey, One day a table did not be turned After the long turn No care much money you a earn If you still want Babylon burn One day a table did not be turned After the long turn 
No care how much money you are earning I just part of the mission Yeah, our was shy, never come bring peace In start of the mission No put your trust in our riches and welcome to our nation I just the last that to some commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision I just part of the mission Hey, Shalom, Israel, Yah, Bashim, Yashar, Rakat, Tham, to all the brothers, Yah, Shemar, Al, Tham, Bashim, Yah, Shai, to all the sisters. And tonight we have the law class taught by me, Officer 50 Barak, Allah. I'm just taking over for um, Officer 1000 Adiyar. He won't be um, available today, right? And today's topic is the dietary laws, right? What we're allowed and not allowed to eat. You understand? What we're allowed and not allowed to consume. You understand? This is the, tonight's topic. All right, and let's get into it. Um, hey, Shalom says Jazz. Yahweh Shema Atav Hashem Yahweh Shah. Mashai, thank for tuning in. All right, so we're going to teach you the dietary laws that your pastor will never teach you, that he lies about, you understand? The Christian church lies about, you understand that? As a matter of fact, no nation has any dietary laws but the nation of Israel, you understand? And these pastors or, Christ or Christians claiming to follow the Bible, follow the Most High, are lying to you. They do not know nothing about the Bible. They don't know nothing about the dietary law, right? If they did, they wouldn't be eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, whatever unlawful thing there is, right? And just a quick side note, like yesterday, it was, um, not yesterday, so like yeah, two days ago, it was the 4th of July. And a lot of our brothers and sisters in the um, in the United States they celebrated Fourth of July with barbecue, and guess what they were putting on the barbecue, right? They were pulling pork ribs, definitely. And if you're from the South, they're most likely eating shrimp, crab, and crawfish, just like they do in Louisiana and a lot of Southern states, right? And they claim to be Christian, they claim to follow the Bible. Well, tonight y'all gonna learn that this has nothing to do with the Bible. You understand? So first of all, we're going to go into Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Because one thing that your pastor will tell you is that it's okay to eat shrimp. It's okay to eat crab, pork, right, lobster. Um, whatever you want to eat, it's okay to eat it. Because the laws are done away with. We're not under the Mosaic law anymore, right? So we're going to read. So for all these Christians who don't believe in the Old Testament, we're going to read that in the New Testament, you understand? Like I said, we're going to start in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. And to anybody tuning in, if you want to be part of the school, right, the ICPK and the commanding general, Yahana, click, click the signing link that are in the chat. You understand? We have French, English, Spanish, Portuguese signing link. Click the link. You understand? Fill up the form. Do your 90 days, get your Hebrew name, get into this truth, get into this one body, you understand? So like I said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, all right? Now, this is Yahawashai speaking. Now, Yahawashai, for those who don't know, is the real, is the actual name of Jesus. This is real Hebrew, Yahawashai Mashiach. We will translate in English to Jesus Christ, you understand? Now, that's him speaking. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Now, what your Christian pastor would say is that the law is done away with, right? But right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Yahweh Shai starts by saying, don't think that when I come is to destroy the law or the prophets. You understand? The law hasn't been destroyed. You understand? The law is still here. And what has been taught in the New Testament, right? Um, they, they got it from the Old Testament. You understand? Let's keep reading. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, what does it mean to fulfill? You understand? It means to complete. Yahweh Shai did not come to destroy the law, to abolish the law. You understand? But to complete it, to make sure we all abide by the law, right? The statutes and commandments that the Most High gave us. You understand? 
So whatever your pa pastor Porkchop is saying, right, he's a damn liar. He doesn't know the Bible, right? And if he does know, he's a false prophet, you understand, claiming that he knows the Bible, claiming that uh, he, he's, a, he's the shepherd of, of, of the lost sheep, you understand? But he's only, he's only um, I could say, he's only, he's only bringing you to sin, you understand? He's only adding more sin to your plate by telling that the law is done away with. You understand? You can eat whatever you want to eat. You can eat griot, pork, crawfish, whatever unlawful things they're eating, right? We just read right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, the law is not done away with. Yahweh is coming back to fulfill the law, to complete it. You understand? Now, let's get into the dietary laws, all right? We're going to go into the book of Leviticus chapter 11. Now, in Leviticus chapter 11, right, you will have a list of animals that you can and that you cannot eat, right, that you are allowed uh, to consume, that you're not allowed to consume. We're going to get into that list right now, right? Uh, we're going to start at verse 1. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And Yahawashai spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, verse 2, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. So now he's going to give us a list of animals that we can consume among all the animals that are on the earth. You understand? This is in Leviticus chapter 11 again. Keep reading. Verse 3. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth cud among the beasts shall ye eat. Now, what does it mean um, to anyone in the chat? What does it mean to have the hoof parted or to be cloven footed and to chew the cud? I'll give you about a minute to answer. What does it mean? Right? An animal that uh, is cloven footed and that cheweth the cud. I'll give you about a minute. To anyone in the chat, Sister Jazz, what does it mean? An animal that is cloven footed that cheweth the cud. Uh, the time I'm gonna just give it to y'all, right? So an anim an animal that's cloven footed is that the hoof is parted in two, right? Like you see a cow's hoof, and you see a horse hoof. The horse hoof is not parted in two; it's like one big toenail. You understand? The cow's hoof is is like two toenails. That's what it means to be cloven footed. It's like a deer hoof, a cow hoof, um, a sheep, a goat. You understand? And to chew the cud. These are animals that eat grass, right? Like cows and sheep, which means they slowly digest their food and they have to re-digest it. You understand? Over and over again. That's what it means to chew the cud. You understand? So these animals that are cloven-footed, which means their hoof is parted in two, and that chew the cud, which means uh, also another word for that, I mean, I think it's like to ruminate, right? Let me look that up real quick for you. <clears throat> Right, so to ruminate, right? That's what it is. That's what it means to chew the cud. You understand? So now, these animals you are allowed to eat. Let's keep reading in verse. Um, the cud is the regular stay for a cow. Right, that that's right. It's most high in Christ. You understand? Like I said, these animals, when they eat grass, they swallow it. And it comes back into their mouth, so they have to they have to chew it again, over and over again, to be able to digest it properly. That's what it means to chew at the cud. You understand? 
Now let's read verse four. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that cheweth the cud or of them that divided the hoof as the camel because he cheweth the cud but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Now, the other animals that either have a hoof parted but don't chew the cud, right? Or chew the cud but don't have a hoof parted. You understand? Just like the camel, for instance, or what else? The pig, you understand? The swine, the boar, or as a matter of fact, the horse, because the horse has a hoof which is not parted, but he chewed the cud. Those are unclean animals unto us. You understand? Meaning, okay, you can't touch a horse, right? You can't touch a pig when it's alive. You understand? Even though I don't recommend it because they're disgusting animals, the pigs. But you can't touch a horse while it's alive. It is not unclean to touch a horse, to ride a horse. You understand? But to consume horse meat would be unclean. It would be considered as a sin because the horse cheweth the cud but doesn't have a parted hoof. You understand? Now let's keep reading. Verse 5. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Now the coney, if I'm not mistaken, is some kind of some kind of rodent. Right? Let me look that up for you just to make sure I'm not giving you wrong information. <laughs> Right, let me see if I could pull up an image for you. I don't know if y'all could see this. I think it's too bright. It's a bit blurry. But a coney, basically, you could look it up. A coney, another name for a coney is the rock hyrax, right? It's some type of rodent that live in the mountains. He cheweth the cud, but he doesn't ha doesn't have a parted hoof. You understand? Whatever animal eats grass, chew the cud, doesn't have a parted hoof, you cannot eat. You understand? Let's keep reading. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean. Now a hare is whatever, like it's about is it's part of the rabbit family. You understand? It's a bit more slender than a rabbit. I think a bit taller than a rabbit as well. But it's the same thing. Rabbit, hares, their un hair meat is unclean to you. And to a lot of uh, our, our people in France, because we had a lot of Benjamites in France, right? In Europe, whatever, France, UK, they like to eat that rabbit meat, right? They like to go hunting rabbits. I'm not sure about the States too much. In Canada, but I know they like in Europe to go uh, to go hunting rabbits and eat that rabbit meat, saying, um, I think it's, the rabbit meat is tender or whatever the case is, it's good for the muscle. La, the most high said that animal is unclean to you. That animal cheweth the cud, he eats the grass um, and digests it multiple times, but he doesn't have a hoof that is parted. You understand? Let's keep reading. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, Yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Now, like I said, the pigs, the swine, the boar, you understand, is as a cloven footed hoof. I mean, his hoof is parted in two, just like a cow, but he cheweth not the cud. You understand? Pigs eat literally everything. You understand? They eat their own excrements, they eat their own babies. You understand? If you leave a dead body in the pig's pen, they will get rid of it. If you don't believe me, look that up. It, they used to be um, used as a, just like a body disposal, right? Especially like um, in Europe, right? Even as a matter of fact, during slavery, right? We were get, we were get, we were get, we would get fed to the pigs. The dead body of slaves would get fed to the pigs so that there'd be nothing remaining. And, and then what the slave master would do is feed us that same pig that would eat our brothers and sisters. See how of a dirty, evil bastard the white man is? But, okay, okay, now, let's look past that, right? Before slavery, 
are people, whether it's the Levites, the Benjamites, the Issacharites, um, whatever in the Northern Kingdom, whatever Northern tribes, right? We were not eating pigs. Pigs were brought to the Americas and the Caribbeans by the Europeans, you understand, by the slave master. We would not be eating pigs. I'm not saying like we, we would only eat lawful food, but pig was not in our, in our diet until 1492. You understand? When Christopher Columbus, the French, the English, they all brought their pigs with them because they were used to eating that nastiness. They brought the pigs with them and they fed us, they fed us that uh, unclean animal. You understand? And now today we have Haitians eating Creole, um, Martinique and Guadeloupe. We eat uh, boudin, which is like a blood sausage. You understand? Uh, Mexico, Mexico, they love the pig. They love the taco al pastor. And they love the blood sausage too. Matter of fact, the Dominicans love chicharrones. You understand? All the tribes now, nowadays, they eat some, they eat pigs in, in some type of way, right? But we have to remember that this animal was fed to us because they wanted to feed us the proper food as slaves. You understand? This is this was slave food that they brought from Europe to us. You understand? And as a matter of fact, okay, it's an, it's an unclean animal to uh, uh, to consume, and it, it'll be a sin. You understand? And the fact that we disobey the Most High. And we um, we keep on eating these animals. The Most High is plaguing us with our uh, judgments and punishments. Like you could you could Google it, you could look it up. Um, the Black and Hispanic nation have the highest rate of um, diabetes and blood pressure, right? <clears throat> That's because of all the all of, all of the unclean food that we eat. You understand? It's not because of only of the oppression that we're under. That's not about it. It's because of, because of all the unclean foods that we eat. You understand? Let's keep reading. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 8. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcasses, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean unto you. Now it tells us, so we read of the camel, the hare, the, um, the, the coney, the swine, we shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their carcasses. You understand? So like, give me one second. So I care for that. So verse 8 tells us that of their flesh we shall not eat, meaning the meat itself, you understand? And of their carcasses we shall not touch, right? They are unclean unto us. So horse meat, grillo, um, in the Middle East, like they claim to have the dietary laws, right? The Ishmaelites but they're still eating camel, which is an unclean animal. You understand? In Europe, they eat rabbits. <coughs> so like, yeah, blood sausages from pig, from pig's blood. You understand? These things are unclean unto us. We shall not even touch their carcasses. So even if we see a dead pig, we cannot touch it. It's not even about the meat itself. We see a dead pig, a dead horse, a dead rabbit. We shouldn't touch it. Right now, we're going to keep reading, right? Salakia. Yeah.
So lucky. I'm a bit. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I'm not gonna sneeze on camera, right? So lucky for that. But um, let's keep reading, right? We're in Leviticus chapter eleven, we're at verse nine. All right. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Now, this is talking about whatever animals in the water that has fins and scales are lawful to eat. Meaning what? Everything that has uh, overlapping scales, right? Because some people would say, um, okay, uh, tuna is lawful to eat, right? Because it has scales. But when you look at tuna, tuna has like some microscopic scales. You understand that you can see under a microscope. But during these times, Moses didn't have no, micro no microscope to, to double check if tuna was lawful or not. You understand? If you cannot see the scales like on a, on a trout, or salmon or red snapper, you understand? It is not a lawful fish to eat, right? Back in the days, we didn't have no microscope to check out the fish. Like, oh, um, this fish has microscopic scales, so it, it's towa, it's good to eat. Ah, tuna, uh, macro is unlawful to eat, you understand? They have fins, but they would not be considered as having scales, you understand? What else? Uh, catfish has fins, no scales. Shark, you like to eat shark in the Caribbean. It has fins, but no scales. You understand? Let's keep reading. And all that have not fins nor scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, it shall be an, ab an abomination unto you. Now, what is an abomination? To whoever's in the chat, Sister Jazz, what is an abomination? Because it tells us that whatever doesn't have skins, it's like it, fins nor scales is an abomination, right? What is an abomination? I'll give you about 30 seconds to respond. What is an abomination? An offense to the most high. Right, right. But not only is it an offense to the most high, you're right, sis, but okay. Try to try to go a bit deeper into it. It's, it's, not, it's not even that deep, to be honest, right? It's really simple. What is an abomination? Why is it... What is, to, what is considered an abomination, right? Homosexuality is an abomination. You understand? Same-sex same sex marriage is an abomination, right? It's an offense to the Most High. You're right. But why is it considered... Why does the Most High consider it an offense? If I could word it like that. Why is it an abomination? <coughs> I'll give you like 20 more seconds. Because it's brick. Right, you're, you're, you're not too far, sis, but it's really more simple than that. Why does the Most High... Okay, let me give you a hint. What do, you, what do you think of homosexuality? What do you think when you see shrimp, crabs, and lobster on the plate? Because you're right, it's an offense to the Most High. It breaks the laws. You're not wrong at all, but it's really more simple than that. I'll give you 15 more seconds and I'll, I'll just give you the answer. It's really simple, sis.
when you see two men together, two women, when you see a transformer, right? When you see a plate of uh, seafood, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It goes against nature. Okay, so when you see a plate of seafood, you could say it goes against nature, but in nature, some animals eat that seafood, right? So let me just give it to you. It is an abomination because to the most high, it's disgusting. You understand? It's, it's um, something regarded with disgust or hatred, right? The most high hate these things because it is disgusting to him. Homosexuality is an abomination because it is disgusting to the most high. You understand? Shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish, whatever has no fins and scales that is in the waters is considered unclean, right? It is considered an abomination because to the most high it is disgusting. Crab legs is disgusting. Uh, what is it like to eat? When you go to Reb's Lobster, you get, a, you get a big piece of lobster. It is disgusting to the most high. You understand? It's not pleasing to him. It's just disgusting. That's what an abomination is, right? You can even look at, look at the word abominable. Something that's abominable is just disgusting. You understand? So the most I said, whatever is in the waters with no fins and scales, whether it's shark, shrimp, crab, lobster, to my people in Louisiana, down south, crawfish, you understand? What else? What do our people like to eat? Um, Mussels, clams, right? In the Caribbean, I think it depends from island to island. But I know in Jamaica, they like conch. In Martinique, we call it a uh, lambi. That's like a big, big sea snail, which, which is absolutely, even just thinking about it, like, I don't know why people would eat a big ass sea snail, salakia, right? The thing is all, like, have you ever seen a snail before? Like, you've seen snails in your garden, right? They're all slimy and thing, just like a, just like a slug with a shell. Now imagine a snail that's like twenty times this size and that lives in the in the sea, and people will just catch that, take it out of the shell and cook it. That sounds like something Moab would do, like the Chinese would do in the in the restaurant Salakia, but that's absolutely disgusting. That's an abomination, and the Most High said. It is discuss is to be considered disgusting to us to eat anything from the waters that has no fins and no scales. You understand? Now let's keep reading, right? <coughs> so like okay, another thing, like um y'all go to the to, to the Asian restaurants or a buffet, right? Y'all order like uh, what's it called? Octopus, calamari. Same thing, that that's absolutely disgusting. You, can, you even look at the thing, it looks all slimy and thing, right? Looks like, it looks, it looks like you, you could chew on it for hours. I don't know how people could eat that. And some people, and so especially the Chinese, the more advice and Koreans, they don't, they don't even gut the thing. They just put it in the frying pan and eat everything. Ink sac, mussels, organs. I'm like, Salakia, that is absolutely disgusting. You understand, but then again, these people don't know the laws of the most high, don't have no dietary laws, so I'm not gonna blame them. But our people should not eat this, these food, they should not follow after these heathens, right? They see like the, um, the Asians eating these type of things, calling them aphrodisiac. Y'all shall not, y'all should not eat them things because the Asian call it aphrodisiac, the Asians call the shark an aphrodisiac. They call um in the, I don't know about the all the islands in the Caribbeans, but in my on my island, the long bee, the big sea snail, they call it aphrodisiac as well, which makes absolutely no sense. Y'all looking for any, for every and any reason just to eat nonsense that is disgusting to the most high, right? Now let's keep reading. Leviticus chapter eleven, verse eleven. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat their flesh. 
but you shall have their carcasses in abomination, meaning, again, you shouldn't eat their flesh, nor even touch a dead fish like that. Like, when you go fishing, okay, you may, you may catch a fish that is unlawful like a catfish, <coughs> right? You just put it back in the water. Don't let it die and then pick it up and put it back in the water, right? It would, you would, it would be considered unclean. So you'd be unclean from even to even, right? Not because the fact that you're unclean is not a sin, but you cannot be unclean and like, okay, let me put it like this. You cannot be unclean and attend a, a holy convocation, a so-called high holy day. You wouldn't be able to be unclean and the next day go to the Passover because you have to be unclean from even to even. You understand? You cannot be unclean and uh, teach class, right? So you have to be careful with these things. You understand? I mean, was it last year? <coughs> I think it was. Yeah, last year, right? Me and Officer Adiyar and Trooper Satan, we went fishing next to Officer Adiyar's uh, old place, right? So I seen a, what was I? What was it again? I think it was a, a shrimp. I think it was a crawfish. So I'm like about to use the crawfish as bait. But I had to make sure, like, first of all, the crawfish wasn't dead, so I wouldn't be able to pick it up. Right. And I seen it wasn't dead, but it was dying. So I didn't take the chance to be unclean for Passover. So I had to pick it up with like a, a plastic bag. Right. And uh, I didn't actually touch the, the crawfish. We have to be careful with these things. You understand? Now, let's keep reading. Verse 12. Whatsoever had no fins nor scales in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. Right. Now let's keep reading verse 13. We're going to the birds now. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. <coughs> Again, an abomination is something disgusting to the Most High. You understand? Eating that disgusting thing to the Most High, like Sister Jazz said, um, it breaks his laws. And it's an offense to the Most High, you understand? Now, these birds we should not eat, right? Keep reading. The eagle, the ossifrage, the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind. And the little owl, and the cormoran, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the jeer eagle, and the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lop, the lapwing, and the bat. Now all these birds <coughs> we should not eat, right? They even said the bat. The bat today would be considered a mammal. But back in the days, I mean, the thing is flying up in the sky. It is a bird, you understand? It's considered a fowl. Now, because we eat things that we're not supposed to eat, we get plagues and um, we get judgments, right? Now, okay, the Chinese did, did not have the law. You understand? They don't have the law or the commandments of the Mosai. You understand? But because they ate whatever, bat soup or whatever mixture they made. I think they were putting in that animal that looks like a Pokemon, I think, the pangolin, right? Whatever whatever soup they made, whatever concoction, right? That gave us COVID. That because the most I say, yeah, don't eat bat. All them things, bat, rat, cat, whatever they're eating, don't eat it. You understand? And most likely they... They cook in that in their restaurants out of, outside their country as well. You understand? Some people would travel to their country to even taste that nastiness. Even our people, right? And we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't eat bad and all them things. Um, my grandma, who was born um, in France, right? She's a Benjamite as well. 
I mean, in France, I mean, in Europe, but I know, especially in France, like, they have the foie gras, right? That's duck liver. Duck, swan, whatever, like, uh, goose, all that family, you understand, is unlawful to eat. It's an abomination. It's disgusting to the most high. Um, ostrich, yimu, right? You cannot eat that. The eagle, the falcon, the hawk. You can't eat these birds of prey. You understand? What can you eat? You can eat chicken. Um, you can eat turkey, quail. What another bird? Um, you can eat pigeon. As a matter of fact, pigeon should be stupid to wab because back in the day, I mean, people used to eat pigeon before they're eating chicken, right? I think it's because uh, pigeon used to be cheaper than chicken, and now chicken is like more a more lucrative business, right? The pigeon is tawab, you understand? And um, let's keep reading, right? It's like, give me one second. So I care for that. Um, we're going to keep reading, but just to mention, if anyone in the chat has any question whatsoever about the topic, Sister Jazz or whoever's in the chat as well, go ahead, shoot, shoot your questions. You already know. Get your answers, right? But um, let's keep reading, right? So now we're at um, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 20. All fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. You understand? So it's talking about, here it's talking about uh, insects. I know it says fowl, but the fowls, they don't creep on all four. What creeps on all four and can fly? You understand? It's talking about insects, right? And most insects would be considered unlawful, but some execs are actually lawful to consume. You understand? This might not be everyone's cup of tea. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. But if you want to, I mean, let's read what's lawful and what's not, right? Verse 21. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet and leap without with all upon the earth now these insects that are lawful to eat with well, the characteristics of them is that their legs are um are above their feet i mean their legs are basically like okay like longer than their body if i may say or basically yeah longer than their body if you understand what i'm saying right <coughs> Now let's let's give a few examples, right? Verse twenty-two. Even these of them ye may eat the locust after his kind, and the ball locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. Now, all of these locusts, ball locusts, grasshoppers, these are all the same families, right? Grasshoppers, locusts, crickets. You understand? Um, I mean, if you go to uh, if you go to Mexico or to any Issacarite spot, a lot of them they're serving crickets. I mean, I went with Officer out of yard to a Mexican spot. We got a plate of crickets. I mean, that was super tall out Salakia, right? But then again, this is not a lawful to eat, right? It's even not, it's actually it tastes super good to be honest, right? Uh, the beetle. Now, there is multiple. Um, species of beetle so you would have to you would oh, you would have to double check right some beetles may not fit the characteristics you understand of a lawful insects to eat right but if it does fit the characteristic uh you're to wab but if you have if you ever have any like uh any doubt before ingesting the the damn beetle just contact a camp leader simple as that you understand 
But if it's about like crickets, whatever, just go ahead, eat a cricket. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, verse 23, but all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until even. You understand? Now, whatever other insect uh, which doesn't fit this description, which is not a, a beetle that fits the description, or any locust family or grasshopper family, they're uh, unlawful to eat. You understand? I mean, um, one second, blah, blah, blah. Right. Some countries like Especially in Asian countries, they're known to be frying tarantulas. They, they fry, they fry, they deep fry spiders. Like Salaga, I don't know. I mean, you see the the abdomen of a spider. You don't even know what's in that thing. I don't even know how you could so like consume that thing. You deep fry it. It don't make no sense. Some some of them. Um, some of them Africans, they go and they they go up into the the uh, a wasp or a honeybee's nest. <coughs> they say, yeah, we we out there to eat the honey, but they don't just eat the honey; they also eat the grubs. You understand? I mean, I don't know who would do that, eat a grub or a caterpillar, but that's la atwa. You understand? That's not a cricket. <coughs> that's la atwa salakia. And their cat carcasses, I mean, yeah, those dead insects, right, they'll be unclean if you touch them. The carcass of a dead spider, you understand, or whatever. I mean, some people, okay, some people have spiders or spets, and the spiders shed their skins. Now, would it be unclean to touch the shed skin of that tarantula that, that uh, just molted? Nah, it wouldn't be unclean because the spider is not dead. You understand? It's just like a, it's just like touching the skin of a a reptile that is that is shedding his skin. The reptile itself is not dead. You understand? So it wouldn't be unclean for you to touch uh, that shed skin of your pet or your spider pet or whatever pet you have, right? Let us keep reading. Or oh, in Salakia, I forgot to mention. Your pet fish might be lawful to eat. I'm not saying it's clean because, you know, it swims in, like, uh, dirty water with chlorine and it swims in its feces, whatever. Like, you understand? It's not It's not like in nature where um, nature sustains itself and there's, uh, it recycles uh, naturally, right? But some pet fish would be lawful to eat. They have fins. They have scales, Right? I'm not saying go ahead and buy buy you like three, five goldfish. You understand? I mean, I was working at a pet store. Some Levites came in. They're like, yeah, I'm buying goldfish. The man said, how many goldfish you want? He's like, we're taking like 10. It's like, 10? What for? We're going to eat? We're going to make them grow? We're going to eat them? I was like, Salakia. But I mean, it's not unlawful, so it was not wrong with that. But I wouldn't recommend it, right? But... If it's not unlawful, just do you, right? Hey, Shalom says, Kala Yahweh, Shemar, Atabah, Shem Yahweh, Shai. Kala for tuning in. Now let's keep reading, right? Where were we? Okay, uh, verse 26. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 26. The carcasses of every beast which divided the hoof and is not cloven footed nor chewed the cud are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be unclean. <laughs> right? Let's keep reading. Verse 27. <coughs> and whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until even. <laughs> now, Meaning, okay, one second. 
Sister Jazz says, so are the animals that are clean to eat? Um, and and what's it? What? So are the animals that are clean to eat the ant who consume plants instead of consuming meat? Wait, I don't get the the second part of your question. I'm not sure if if you made a mistake in the question. If you could rephrase that for me, Baba Kusha says, right? So I can make sure I answer it properly. But um, I'll be waiting on your question. So until then, so now verse 20, what we just read, verse 26 and 27, right? It's talking about the carcass of every other animal that is unclean. So like, okay, if you have a pet dog that dies and touched the pet dog's body, the dog would be unclean. So you would be unclean as well. You understand? From even to even. Same goes for your pet cat, your pet rabbit. You understand? Um, those would be unclean, right? If you have, if you have, uh, some people have pet pigs. I don't even know why, but these would be unclean. Their carcass of your dead pet would be unclean. You understand? As well as if you eat the meat of an unclean animal, just like the Moabites. The Moabites they like to eat dog, cat, rat. The Africans as well, you understand? They would be unclean and that would be unlawful, right? So, um, I mean, it's not unlawful to, to like, okay, get the your pet dog out of the house or you want to bury it or whatever, right? But um, you would be unclean, right? Hmm. Sister Jazz says, Salaka, do we only eat animals who are vegetarians? La says, let me tell you why. Some birds, like the chicken or um, the turkey, they eat insects. You understand? They're not, they're not strictly on the, on the veggie meat, on the veggie diet. Some fish eat fish. Some of the bigger fish that has fins and scales eat smaller fish. Some of them eat frogs, right? Uh, you can look up what is a snakefish or alligator gar. These fish are, or even a tiger fish, right? These fish have fins and scales, but they're predator fish. So it's not about eating fish. It's not about eating animals only that are vegetarian. I mean, when it comes, okay, when it comes to mammals, Right, you see the cow, the um, the deer. I mean, the giraffe is the giraffe is lawful as well. It has it chewed the cud and has a split it hoof. The reason why we wouldn't eat the giraffe because I guess it's endangered species, right? The antelope, all of them. Okay, I get it. They're vegetarians, but when it comes to fish, fish eat fish. You understand? Fish eat frogs. Fish eat insects. Fish eat lizards. I mean, fish would eat whatever fits in their mouth, to be honest, right? So it's not about eating the animals that are vegetarians, but about eating the animals that are lawful, according to Leviticus chapter 11, right? So when it comes to the, to the hoof that is split, <coughs> Salakia, when it comes to the hoof that is split, it must chew at the cud, right? But when it comes to like, uh, so like the fish, it must have fins and scales, regardless of what it eats. So that's a good question, but no, we don't only eat animals that are vegetarian. All right, I hope I answered your question. And um, right, so when you're unclean, let's, go, let's get back to the scripture. When you're unclean, you're gonna be unclean from even to even, right? So let's say um, you have Passover the next day and your dog just died. I mean, if you want to attend Passover, you may want to ask someone to right, get rid of the body. I know, I know it might be a sensitive topic for some people, right? I'm just going to say it like that, to dispose of the body of your pet because you don't want to touch a carcass and be unclean for Passover. You understand? If you want to make it to class, 
physically, have someone dispose of the body that is not going to make it to class. You understand? Or even me, like, when I feed my snake, I have I have dead rats, but I never touch these rats, to be honest. Like, I never touch the rats physically. Because like, I know that it is an unclean animal, and I would be unclean myself, right? So even when I feed it, I make sure I don't feed it right when I have class the next day whatsoever. But even if I do have class, I make sure I don't physically touch the animal. You understand? So let's keep reading. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, we're going to jump um, down to verse 29. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, the weasel, the mouse, the tortoise, after his kind, and the, verse 30, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole, verse 31. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until even, right? Now, whatever creep it on the earth, meaning like we just read this, the uh, <coughs> the weasel, um, the mouse, the ferret, uh, them turtles. What is the when it says tortoise? I mean, is the turtle that that um that is um it's, it's, okay? It's not them turtles that live in the water. It's the turtles that that are terrestrial, right? But even them that are in the water, they don't, they don't have fins. And, they don't have fins, but scales, so they would be unclean as well. Those that are terrestrial would be unclean if you touch their carcass or eat um or eat of their flesh, right? The mouse, the rat. So like, I'm, again, I'm gonna go on Moab because Moab eats every goddamn thing. They eat turtles, rats, bats, mouse. Uh, what's that? A shrew? I don't know what that is, but it is unclean. Right, uh, the chameleon, whatever reptile, lizard, snake, crocodile, it is unclean. I mean, if my snake dies and I touch the carcass of my snake, right, I would be unclean from even to even. You understand? But the okay, so now let me come back to the, what I was saying before. If you have a pet tarantula, a pet lizard or snake, and it sheds its skin, you are not unclean for touching the. Um, the, the the shedded skin or the molt of the tarantula, right? Because the animal itself is not dead. You understand? But if you go and buy yourself crocodile boots or um, a snake wallet, right? That'll be unclean because the process of making these boots and this wallet, the animal have to be dead in order for in order for the man for whoever's um, for the manufacturer to um, fabricate these boots and this wallet. You understand? So the shed the shedded skin of a snake or lizard is not unclean, but crocodile boots or whatever snake boots, whatever ex accessory made out crocodile bags, right? Whatever accessory made out of this animal skin is unclean because of the process it takes to make these accessories, right? Just like uh, we read, um, I was talking about your dog carcass, right? So even a fur coat, right? would be unclean because of the process it takes um, to make the fur coat. The animal has to be dead. His skin has to be ripped off of the animal, you understand? And part of his skin stays on the fur, which is on the coat. So if you have that fur coat and it's real fur, it is unclean, you understand? So just get you like something synthetic, right? It's just as warm, you understand? <coughs> Anyways, most people who have fur coats just want to show off. Ain't no reason to show off and be unclean, right? So let's see if you keep reading. Um, verse 32. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, though it fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack, whatso whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water and it shall be unclean until even, so it shall be cleansed. Now, coming back to if my pet snake dies, that cage that it stays in, the cage now is unclean because the body of the dead snake is in it. You understand? 
it is a vessel that will be unclean. Stakala said, um, even leather is unlawful. La leather is not of an unclean animal. You understand? Leather comes from cows. I mean, there's all types of letters, but the one that comes from cows, it is not unclean. You understand? It's not like it's not like snake boots who have a crocodile bag, right? Or some people have a what do they have? The thing the thing to be lucky, right? A rabbit's foot, right? Or they have a necklace of a shark tooth or crocodile teeth. Those are unclean, coming from unclean animals. You understand? But let me give you an example. You're talking about leather being unlawful. You see, during a Sabbath service, when we blow the horn, it is the horn of a ram, right? It is not an unclean thing. You understand? The horn of a ram, right? Um, back in the days, they had um, they had gourds, right? I say a gourd again. A gourd it would be like a... a uh, how you call it? A vessel where you would put in water in it. It would be made out of uh, the sheep's stomach. You understand? That wouldn't be unclean. That would be made to carry water. That would not be unclean. You understand? And just like General Mahayman brought out in another class, John the Baptist, I think he had some type of garment made out of camel's hair. The reason why it wasn't unclean because you could shear the camel's hair like you shear uh, uh, the wool off of the back of a sheep and you could wear it. So as long as you don't take it off of the dead camel, it is not unclean, right? So, and if again, depending on the accessory that you're gonna get, you're not sure, contact your camp leader. But like I'm saying, um, it's, it's, it's really simple, right? Like leather comes from a clean animal, your, your tawab, um, chinchilla coats, right? The process of having a chinchilla coat or any fur coat would, would be unclean because you have to kill the animal to take that fur off his skin, right? Some other coats you have, um, or pillows, you have duck feather in it. Now, you don't need to kill the duck in order to get the feather to put in the coat or the pillow, so that wouldn't be unclean. You understand? But always check with your camp leader if you have any like doubts. What I'm telling you is that as far as leather, it's just like having a ram, a horn, ram's, ram's horn. You understand? That wouldn't be unclean. It's just like, um, yeah, you were, you were not there in Toronto. No, you were there in Toronto. What am I talking about? But you were not there during the class, I think. Right? We have with General Mahayman. Um, I think it's King David had a throne made of ivory. Now, ivory is like the elephant tusk. You understand? That would not be unclean because you could, you could, um, you could harvest that tusk without killing the animal. I mean, nowadays, today, they kill the elephants to harvest the tusk. So there's a different story, right? But you could harvest the tusk without killing the animal itself. So it wouldn't be unclean even though an elephant is an unclean animal. It would not be unclean to have um, an elephant's tusk or a knife with, made of ivory. You understand? Depending on how it is acquired. Because if you go and kill that elephant to get, get, to get uh, the ivory, that will be considered unclean. Right? But if you harvest the ivory without killing the elephant, you're to, you're to wab, you're good to go. You understand? No. So like y'all give me give me one second.
so lucky I get a bit under the weather, so I'm not gonna blow my nose or sneeze on camera, right? But um, one last thing about your question, sis, it's like having a okay. You see when we you, you see when Esau goes hunting, well anyone can go hunting, right? But especially Esau, he likes to keep the horns or the antlers of a deer or a moose that would not be unclean, even though he takes it off a a, a dead deer. Right, that would not be unclean if you want to hang like a trophy of um of the antlers of a moose or a, a deer, whatever the case is. Go ahead, it's toab. It's not unclean. But if you want to have like a necklace of crocodile teeth or the teeth of a boar, right? That is unclean. You understand? Now, let's see if we could keep reading. Uh, so we just read of the, if the animal is dead and it's in a vessel, so like if my snake is dead and it's in its cage, the cage would be unclean and I would have to clean the cage, wash it with water, clean it. It would be unclean from even till even. You understand? Now, um, uh, 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 let's see, where shall we go next? Uh, Okay, we're going to go into something next. Give me one second. Still on topic about the dietary laws, right? So there is a misconception or a matter of fact, a lie being told by a lot of Christians uh, or fake Israelites, which is pretty much the same thing, to be honest, right? Or Rastafarians, that you cannot eat meat. The Bible um, is against eating meat. You have to be vegan. Which, first of all, we just dispel that lie using uh, Leviticus chapter 11, talking about we can eat of any animal that has split hoof and chew at the cud, right? But if they want to skip over that, we're going to show them in um, Leviticus chapter 23, where we are required, you understand, is a requirement to eat meat during a certain period of time, you understand? So let's get into that. Going to Leviticus chapter 23. I mean, you're not obligated to eat meat every day, right? You don't have to eat meat if you want. You can live a you can live a vegan lifestyle. That's that's really your business. That's your problem. You understand? But uh, don't force your ideology on a brother or sister, right? Especially if it's wrong. You understand? One second. Leviticus chapter 23. Because there is no law that says that you have to eat grass only, so like yeah, vegetables, right? There is no law about it. There's actually laws where you have, you're required to eat meat. You understand? We're going to read that right now. Uh, we're going to go into uh, Leviticus chapter 23. As a matter of fact, now, we're going to go into Exodus. First, chapter 12, verse 1. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Right? <clears throat> so Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, it reads, And Yahweh I spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, so like, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Verse 2, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Verse 3, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, you shall take to every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for the house, a lamb for an house. You understand? Now, what we're getting into, we're getting to the first Passover, right? And during the Passover, it is a custom for us uh, Israelites to eat lamb and unleavened bread. And again, we eat lamb, we consume it. You understand? Lamb is a meat, is a baby, is a baby sheep. You understand? There is no law in the Bible that says not to eat meat. But there is requirements for us to eat meat at certain periods of time. You understand? Keep reading. 
Verse 4, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Verse 6, And ye shall keep it up until the 14th month of the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. <coughs> Verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides of po two sides posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Right? So now just said that. Okay, so in Egypt, what we did to avoid the plagues of the Most High, we, we took a lamb, we killed it, right? We took his blood and we put it on the, how you call it, the door frame, right? On the side of the, on the two sides of the door frame of our house, right? Which back in the day, we call it the posts, right? And afterwards, uh, we ate the lamb, we consumed it, understand? If we... It, if we had to be vegetarian in the Bible, the Most High would never tell us to consume a lamb, right? Especially during the day that would be considered the day of the Most High. You understand? Which is the Passover. We are required to eat lamb during the Passover, right? Now, verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it, right? And also like, yeah. Verse 9, eat not of it raw, nor sodden all with water, but roast with fire, his head, his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Now he's talking about we eating the whole lamb. And we cannot uh we cannot make stew, right? I mean curry goat or, or lamb stew, whatever, whatever they want to call it. We cannot um fry the lamb, we have to roast it with fire, meaning we have to either put it in the oven or barbecue the lamb. That would be the custom of the Israelites on how to consume lamb during the Passover. Again, there is no law that says you have to be vegetarian. You cannot eat meat in the Bible. If you don't feel like eating meat the whole year, don't. But when the Passover comes, you have to eat that, uh, that meat offering made with fire. You have to eat that lamb. You understand that lamb chop, that lamb leg. That's what you have to eat during the Passover, right? Stop believing like fake Israelites or Rastafarians or Christians talking about you cannot eat lamb, uh, you cannot eat meat, right? If if they ever tell you that, um, ask them. So what were the Israelites doing, or what Yahweh was doing during the Passover? What was he eating? You understand? Because I had that argument with, with, with many people already, like, cannot eat meat. You understand? You're not supposed to eat meat. It's a sin. I mean, if it is a sin, why would the Most High tell us to eat lamb during the Passover? The Most High wouldn't bring you to sin. You know, y'all not making sense. Y'all just sound like lunatics smoking weed and thing, right? Don't listen to them. If they ever tell you that, cut them with the Passover or with Leviticus 11 where we are allowed to eat certain meats, certain fish, certain birds, you understand, certain insects. Whatever is lawful in Leviticus chapter 11, or as a matter of fact, as well as Deuteronomy chapter 14, we are allowed to eat, we're allowed to consume. Don't believe in fake, in fake Israelites or Christians, right? As a matter of fact, we're going to go into uh, the book of Micah chapter 7 verse 5. We're going to see what it says. Don't believe in these fake Israelite groups, these fake Christians. Don't believe in your friends talking about you can't eat meat, talking about um, they know the Bible better than you, or um, they so called woke and they say meat is not good for your body. Um, meat is, meat is a car carcinogenic, whatever, carcinogenic, right? Whatever. It, it, it brings cancer. Don't listen to these nuts. Right. 
we're going to go into Micah chapter 7, verse 5, which says, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You understand? Don't trust these friends, these weed heads, these so-called um, conscious brothers and sisters talking about you can't eat meat. Um, it's it's not good for your for your blood cells. It's not good for the brain. It's, it's it's not whatever excuse they come up with, right? Tell them to stop smoking weed. You understand? Tell them to stop looking at the stars and seeing uh, the constellation of the lion or whatever Greek mythology they 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 they, they studying, right? Tell them to stop. Uh, burning sage in their house. You understand? Don't listen to these nuts. They don't know the Bible. They don't know what they're talking about. If they want to eat grass all year long, right, let them eat grass. Right? If they want to be tree huggers, right, talking about nature, I mean, go ahead. Do you. You understand? If they want to be vegetarian, vegan, if they want to eat uh, fake meat all the time, go ahead. But when the Passover comes, you better put you 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 you, you better eat that lamb. You better consume that lamb, salakia. Right? You better consume that lamb. I mean, okay. For those who eat meat, don't go and start eating all type of meats. Don't eat pork. Right? Whatever's in the water. Don't eat shrimp, crab, lobster. You're, don't eat meats that you're not allowed to eat. For those who eat meats, eat all the meat. Um, have a buffet. Have an all you can eat. Have an all you can eat. That is lawful. You understand? Have an all you can eat that is lawful. Have uh, get a steak. Um, if we could eat giraffe, I mean, you could have a giraffe steak. I mean, but the only reason why we don't eat it, like I said, is because it's an endangered animal. But in the kingdom, Esau's not going to be hunting animals to extinction. So I guess we could be having a giraffe steak in the kingdom, antelope. You understand? Um, so like I have, I have deer in the fridge. I have bison in the fridge, which is tawab. You understand? I'm about to get my hunting license. Hunt me some moose. So like, yeah, I'm about to bring officer out of and officer Zabaja with me. You see me, right? And Officer Shari one as well. They about to, I'm about to bring him in the woods. We go hunting some turkey, some moose, some deer, whatever is lawful. Hey, yeah, they they better be bulletproof or else they're getting it into our stomach. They're getting on the place. So lock you. <laughs> you see what I mean? But at the end of the day, if you want to be vegan, go be vegan. When the Passover comes, you better eat that lamb. You understand? <laughs> no. What about the dietary laws? Okay. So now we're going to get into another misconception about what so we went over, what we could, um, we could and we could not eat, right? Now let's go over what we're allowed to drink and how we're allowed to drink. You understand? When I'm talking about drinking, I'm not just talking about drinking water because you drink, you, you, we all drink water. I mean, it's, it's like the basics. We drink water. We drink milk from our mother, right? It's, this is the basic. But now, um, let's see if it's if if like the Christian says, it's like some of the Muslims say, some East Indians say the same thing. Let's see, even Rastafarians. Let's see if it's unlawful to drink alcohol, right? Now we're going to go into Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. So give me one second.
Salakia for that. So Salakia, we're going to go into Proverbs chapter 31, verse 6, right? Let's see if it's unlawful to drink alcohol. As a matter of fact, we're going to start at... Um, uh, Okay, we're going to start at verse 4 because this is a scripture like they might use to prove to try and prove that it is unlawful to consume alcoholic any alcoholic beverage, right? Let's get into it. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 4. It is not for kings or Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Verse 5. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now it says it's not for kings or princes to drink strong drink, to drink wine, right? They could also apply it to like um like they could apply it to like beer, whatever alcoholic beverage you want to drink there is, right? But when it says it's not for princes or kings to drink strong drink or wine, it says lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted, meaning Okay, so if they get drunk and out of control and they don't and they're not lucid, you understand, they're not in their right mind, that they pervert the judgment, right? That's what it means. They cannot be drunk out of their minds and um and start to uh judge unrightfully, right? And righteously, Slakia. Meaning you cannot be a drunk. You cannot just drink and 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 have and have no reason anymore, and you don't know how to act. You don't make no sense. Not coherent. You understand? That's what it means. Because if we keep reading further that down uh, in the chapter, right? Verse six says, "Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that have unto those that be of heavy hearts." You understand? So you could cut them with that because in the first, in the in the first, in the two previous verse, verse four and five, it says not to drink, right? But in verse six, it says to give strong drink, meaning rum, scotch, whiskey. You understand? To those um, that are ready to perish. So lock yeah. In one second. So lock it for that. So it says, to give strong drink to those that are ready to perish and wine to those that be of heavy hearts. Now, a heavy heart is like, okay, you're depressed or you're in sorrow. You understand? Your heart is heavy. So you have a drink to cool off, to relax, right? Um, some people drink to mourn, but it doesn't mean like get drunk. You understand? Because we have laws against drunkenness. You understand? We can drink, but we cannot be drunk out of our mind all the time. The Most High hates that. You understand? And if we continue reading, verse 7, it reads, Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Especially us right now that um, we're, we're oppressed. We're living in hell. So, I mean, one of the ways that um, that we cope, well, coping is a strong word because, um, okay, our ways that we deal with this oppression is we have a drink from time to time here and there, right? Which is Tawa. But, okay, our Native American Indian brothers and sisters, the way they drink and um, get drunk, I mean, that is La Tawa. I'm not blaming them because. Um, they're oppressed. All the nation of Israel is oppressed. And the uh, goddamn devil the Bible speaks of, he, he knows that, he knows how bad he's oppressing the Gadites, right? Which is our native Indian brothers and sisters. 
So what he does is not only he pushes drugs in their neighborhoods, but he knows like a lot of them have an alcohol alcohol problem and he pushes alcohol in their communities, especially to those who have a problem. Now it's not unlawful to drink, but it is lawful to drink to a certain extent, right? Some people have, some people uh, are more tolerant than others. They can have uh, uh, more drinks than others. Some can only drink one glass a night. You understand? Some people cannot even handle strong drink. Some people can only drink wine. Some people can only drink beer. You understand? I mean, don't go over your limit either, right? Especially if you're doing it uh, will willingly, because then you'll be drunk all the time. You'd be a drunkard, and that's when uh, you commit sin. You understand? That's when it becomes unlawful to drink. You understand? Now let's get into another scripture. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. People think like, okay, we say you're allowed to drink. means you're allowed to get drunk. La, we have laws against getting drunk. You understand? Go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. It says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Meaning, okay, you can have a couple of drinks of wine, but when it creeps upon you, I mean, it could creep upon you. You understand? It could catch you by surprise. Whereas in you, you drink too fast and you start getting drunk without even realizing it, right? Or you think, um, oh, I'm not even drunk yet, so I feel like I could still drink. Don't drink in that spirit because um, two twos and you start, you start getting drunk without even realizing it. You understand? That's why it says, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Meaning, okay, you can drink, but don't start thinking like, okay, I'm not, <coughs> okay, I'm not drunk yet, so I feel like I could drink more. Not knowing that alcohol, you, you will feel the effects of you won't feel the effects of alcohol after that one glass right away, right? The effects of alcohol um, it creeps upon you, meaning like okay, it gets it, to, it 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 takes the time to get into your bloodstream, right? And um, so that you can feel the effects of the ethanol and all the alcohol. You understand? You're not gonna feel it right away. So don't think like, okay, I'm not drunk yet, so I can still have one more drink or one, two drink, right? Because next thing you know, you're next thing you know, you're you're stumbling, you're on the floor, your your speech is slurring. You understand? You're not it's not wise to be drinking like that, to be drinking in that spirit, right? A lot of our brothers and sisters, they don't have, they don't know their limits, and it's not wise drinking not knowing your limit. You understand? Because, okay, maybe, because a lot of our brothers and sisters drink at a young age. Some of them may not know their limits. It may be an accident where you go over your limit once or twice, right? But if you start doing this willingly, right, claiming you never know your limit, you just drink and say, okay, I'm not drunk and I keep drinking until I get drunk, that is not wise. You understand? You don't know... We we say we say you don't know how to drink. Don't even drink if it's if it, if it, if it's that case. Don't even drink. You understand? Because okay, you see how the white men drink. We know how the white men drink. Like whether it's, if it's a bar or at home or whatever the case is, he drink and he's loose. Us, the nation of Israel, is not like that. And if you see brothers and sisters like that you should know that we're not supposed to be like that. Because even during, uh, let's say it's the Passover, the Feast of First Fruits, right? Whatever a high holy convocation we have, it's like we're it's a holy gathering, right? Some people think because we follow the Bible, there's no, um, how you call it? Okay, for a lack of better words, there's no fun, there's no parties, but the Passover is like a party for us. It's a celebration. And during the celebration, there's food involved, there's drink involved. 
involved. So we drink. We don't just drink juice or water. We have some wine. We have some strong. We drink. We ma- we are married together, right? We are happy. We're there's brotherhood, sisterhood. You won't see a brother or sister being drunk, right? If you see a brother or sister being drunk at the Passover, out of his mind, just know that he's going to be dealt with accordingly, right? He's going to be put aside because you cannot reflect a, I was going to say a bad spirit, but um, you cannot reflect that ignorant spirit. You always have to be wise in everything that you do, right? You cannot put a bad image on the school or on the nation. You understand? That's what I mean. Right. So if you don't know how to drink, if it is better for you not to drink, right, if you can only handle like one glass of the whole night, chill with that one glass. You understand? If you cannot drink at all, just don't drink. It's as simple as that. Don't start drinking because you see brothers drinking. Don't start drinking because you see sisters drinking. Right. I mean, don't. Okay, so ain't nothing wrong with drinking, right? But don't follow after your lust. You understand? If you have that little de- that little drinking demon you're telling you, oh, these brothers are drinking, just join them. Get at least one glass and you are one, two shot. If that second shot is a bit too much or that, that one shot gets you drunk, because that might happen with some people who are less tolerant than others, just don't do it. It's just as simple as that. Don't embarrass yourself. You understand? Don't be an embarrassment to the Most High either, to the nation. You understand? Because we are the children of the Most High. We created in the image of God. You think God is going? You think the image of God is just being drunk out of His mind? La, that's not the image of God. You understand? Christ was drinking wine. You think Christ was drinking wine until he was stumbling on the streets? La, and that's where we're getting to next. Right. Some people say um, that Yahweh Shai, that, uh, okay, we're going to, okay, we're going to go first in Revelation, right? Chapter one, I think it's verse 14. People say Christ never drank wine, whatever the case is. That's a damn lie. Right. Like in, in John chapter 4, verse 22, it says, they don't know what they worship. You understand? We know what we worship because they don't know the Bible. But we know the Bible. We know the scriptures. So we know what it's talking about, right? So let's get into it. Right. So the revelation of John, right? I mean, <clears throat> so like chap- Revelation chapter 1 talks about the revelation of Christ, right? So in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, it says, His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, right? So it's talking about the head, his hair on his head and on his face, right? Christ had white woolly hair, but that's not what we're getting at. We already know Christ is a black man, you understand? But then it says, his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning his eyes, okay, he had a, a fierce look. When he looked at you, he looked. You, he had the scary look, you understand? Not only that, but his eyes were red because Christ drank wine. You understand? And I'm going to show you where it says Christ drank wine. Again, in the New Testament. We're going to jump to Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Like it. And it reads, Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking. Now, the son of man is another term to describe uh, Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? He came eating and drinking. Now, the son of man wasn't, I mean, he was drinking water, but he wasn't just drinking water, right? He was drinking wine. You need to understand that. He was having a strong drink or he was drinking wine. You understand? That's that's why his eyes were red. When you drink, 
at a certain point, your eyes start getting red. Now, some Rastafarian nut will say, Christ was smoking weed, that's why his eyes were red. La, to smoke, whatever, weed, cigarettes, crack cocaine, whatever there is to smoke, it is unlawful, and Christ was not a sinner. You understand? Christ was drinking wine. And again, drinking is not a sin. Therefore, Christ would be able to drink. You understand? Um, uh, I'm even going to show you where the Most High says um, you could go use your money to buy a drink. You understand? We're going to jump to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26. So lucky I'm speeding up a bit. I don't want to be too fast, but we're almost ending the class. Right. Like I said, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26. <coughs> you understand? The most I told us we could use our money to go buy a bottle of scotch. We could use our money to go buy a bottle of rum or wh whatever you feel like drinking, right? You could use your money for that. You understand? Like I said, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desired, and thou shalt eat there before Yahweh thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou in thine household. Now, what does it mean to bestow? Anyone in the chat, Sister Kala, Sister Jazz, what does it mean to bestow? I'm going to give you a few seconds. What does it mean to bestow? The Most High said, and thou shalt bestow thy money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after. What does it mean to bestow? Let me give you 15 more seconds for time's sake. If y'all don't get it, it's to up. I'll get it for y'all. Right, right. Most high in Christ is to Kala. So the bestow is to use, to be, to be exact, to put to use or to apply. So you're putting your money to use to buy a strong drink or wine. You understand? And some... All right, some wicked Christian or, again, fake Israelites, which is the same, will say, the Mosai said, um, whatsoever thy soul lusted after. Well, the Mosai is not going to tell you, go buy weed with your money. Go buy sin with your money. Go buy whores, whatever your soul is lusting after. You understand? Whatever is lawful that your soul is lusting after. You understand? If... You want, meaning if you want to drink tonight, you want to buy a bottle, put that money to use to buy a bottle. If you want to go to the restaurant and eat a steak, go do that. If you want to buy a piece of lamb, right, just go do that. Go spend your money on the lamb. You want to buy an Hennessy bottle? You want to buy a $100 bottle? Go on, buy a $100 bottle. You understand? But don't. Okay. So if you're lusting after a horse, right? Don't go spend your money on a horse because that's what your soul is lusting after. The Most High will never tell you to go after something that is sinful. You understand? That is the spirit of Christianity. A Christian would tell you, well, the Most High told me to spend my money on whatever I'm lusting after. Right now, I want some Gucci. So. I'm going to go to the whorehouse. Ah, that's a Christian mindset. 
And we already know Christians do not know the Most High. They don't follow the Most High. You understand? So whatever you're lusting after, meaning, meaning whatever um, whatever you feel like doing tonight, you want to go to the bar, go to the bar, spend some money on some drinks. You understand? Just don't don't be don't be getting drunk. We already covered that. You cannot get drunk out of your mind walking out the bar, getting into a bar fight because you're too drunk, um, st stumbling on your feet, whatever the case is. But if you want to go buy a bottle, put that money to use to buy a bottle. You want to drink with your rib tonight? Go buy a bottle of wines or whatever the ribs drink, rosé, barefoot, rum. If she, she likes to drink rum, go buy some rum. You want to drink scotch, vodka? Go ahead, do your thing. You understand? The most I said, Bestow that money to buy a, to buy some wine, drinks, some food. You understand? Be be happy with your household. So like okay, I'm paraphrasing, right? But you get the point. You understand? So like okay, we're gonna get into um like I said, your lust is something lawful. So now we're gonna get into Galatians. Chapter nine, chapter five, verse nineteen. Right, we're gonna go into the unlawful lust. What you should not do with your money. How you should not act. You understand? <coughs> like I said it's Galatians, chapter five, verse nineteen. Uh, okay, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, right? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, variance, emulations, wrath, Strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Meaning, those are the lusts of the flesh. Those are the, um, the desires of your flesh that you should not do. Those are unlawful things like adultery, you understand, to be unclean, fornication, which is unlawful sex, like adultery, bestiality. And we read in verse 21, drunkenness, you should not be a drunk, you should not be a drunkard, you should not see you on the street, lay down on the floor, you understand, because you had too much to drink, right? We shouldn't have to carry you home, you understand? I mean, you see a brother or, or sister that is too drunk, do carry them home, show sisterhood and brotherhood, but let them know that is not lawful, that is not how she should, how he or she should conduct herself you understand we're not supposed to be drunkards we're not supposed to show our drunkenness understand to supposed to be weak to the lust of the flesh right uh, one second i think we're gonna go in ecclesiastes now is it ecclesiastes or ecclesiasticus we're gonna go into two more scriptures and end the class. I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 16. Give me one moment. Corinthians six. I think it's Ecclesiastes. Chapter seven. Uh, uh, uh. Let 
Now, one more, one moment. It's be Ecclesiasticus then. In the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus. Right, that's where it is. Ecclesiasticus, chapter um, 31, verse 27, right? Again, it's about drunkenness. Do you understand? So we're going to start at uh, verse 25, Salakia. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 31, verse 25. Shew not that valiantness in wine. For one has destroyed many. Meaning, don't show your willingness to like. Okay, someone's telling you like, okay, go drink, or show your show your pride into like, okay, I'm a, I'm a big drinker. You understand? Don't go and do that because wine or whatever strong liquor destroyed many. Many feel proud being like, okay, I'm a big drinker. I could drink a lot. I'm more tolerant. Well, you might be the next one on the floor, or your your liver might not function like it used to, right? Because personally, I have some family members, they cannot drink anymore because of how they used to drink back in the days in their past. You understand? Don't be that brother or sister that cannot have a drink anymore because of his over drinking. You understand? Or you might even die from alcohol poisoning. Who knows? Right? Don't shoot that valiantness in wine. For wine had destroyed many. You understand? Verse 26. The furnace proved the edge by dipping. So doth wine in the hearts of the proud by drunkenness. You understand? Verse 27. Wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk moderately. Now I say if, if it be drunk, it doesn't mean you have to be drunk. It's just an old... Uh, old English term, which is the language that was uh, used to be um, to translate the Bible, Old English. So wine is as good as life for a man if you drink moderately. You understand? It, like they say today, if you drink responsibly, you understand? There's no, there's no issue with drinking at all. If we keep reading, what life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make man glad. Now, the Most High made alcohol for us to be glad, to be able to chill out, to be able to relax, have a drink, and just sit sit yourself down and you know enjoy a, a, a cool night. That was wine is that's what wine was made for, or, or whatever alcohol. You understand? Some people say, yeah, um, the white man he made alcohol during slavery to to have the slave docile and everything. That's that, that that's that's a lie. That's not true. Alcohol's been there for, for a century before slavery. You understand? I mean, some of the natives, the natives had alcohol before the white man came here. You understand? They had from they were just doing ferment fermented drinks, right? And that was create in the process it was creating alcohol and an alcoholic beverage. That's it. Right? Keep reading. Verse 28. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringing gladness of the heart and cheerfulness of the mind. Right? When you drink um, moderately and everything, not when you get drunk, but when you drink, you have that little um, salakia. I forgot what's it called. I think it's some kind of chemical reaction in your body. And you have a, you have a sense of joy. A sense of ecstasy. I forgot the exact term of it, right? You get that euphoria. You get to laugh. You get to be happy. You understand? Um, you have that little buzz going on. You understand? That's what it means, right? You're cheerful of the mind, and you're glad to the heart. If we keep reading, verse twenty-nine. But wine drunken with excess make it bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling. Now, if you keep if you drink to the point where you get drunk, right? Um, it plays with your head. You get into fights. You get into art, stupid arguments over what? Over who drank the last glass? Who took the last beer? Who drank the last shot? You understand? Uh, who shoved you at the bar? 
right? If you drink with excess, you're clouding your mind. That's what it says, right? Verse 30, drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. It diminishes strength and make it wounds, right? Just like I explained in verse 29, it clouds your mind, you get into fights. Um, so like a, it, you get more, you get bitter and bitter, you get more angry for no, for no reason, right? You get out of control, you understand? Um, you make wounds. Sometimes you may burn some bridges that you cannot repair. And it's then because you're drunk out of your mind, you say something you never meant to say, or you you act a fool and you do something you never meant to do. You understand? Either it's to get in a fight with a, with a close friend, or to kill someone, get on the road drunk driving, and you kill someone or you kill yourself. You understand? You're out of control because you're drunk. You drank with excess, like it said. Right, verse 31, rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despiteful words and press not upon him with urging to drink. Meaning, all right, don't, um, how do you say that? Don't rebuke your neighbor, uh, uh, as we know already, neighbor meaning a fellow Israelite, right? I always bring it out in the brotherhood class. But um, don't give him no despiteful words. Don't start talking down on him, you understand, because he won't drink. Don't press him uh, to drink with you if you know he has a problem of, if he has no, he has a problem with alcohol or uh, if he can't, um, or he doesn't know, or you know he doesn't know his limits. You understand? Or he cannot he cannot handle the drink. Don't 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 apply peer pressure on your fellow Israelite to have a drink with you if they can't drink. You understand? Because he might get drunk and he might start fighting you even though you're lucid in your mind. You understand? Don't bring don't bring him to that. Right? And we're gonna go into a last scripture. Because if you urge him to drink. That might be one of the lusts of his flesh, right? Not like what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 26, where it said, uh, whatever lust your flesh desires, go ahead and buy you a bottle, right? La, because some of the lust of the flesh is actually harmful to us, right? Just like, okay, if you eat, if you drink too much water, you're going to get bloated. You understand? It wouldn't make no sense to drink water till the, till the point where you're, Stomach explodes. You understand? Just like if you drink too much wine, you're gonna get uh, probably like um, into a fight, into an argument, into an accident. You understand? If you drive drunk, right? So don't fall into the lust of the the lust of the flesh like that. And we're gonna get one last scripture about the lust of the flesh. We're going to go into uh, 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Yeah, we're going to start at verse 15, right? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, meaning. So the world is the age of society that we live in, just like they're just saying, which says, we live in the white man's world, meaning we live in the white man's society. So whatever is in the white man's world, whatever pleasure there is, whores, drugs, fast money, well, whatever, name it, whatever there is in the white man's world, don't have no love for it. Don't have no attraction to it, right? Don't have no attachment to it, you understand? Because if you love those things that are in the world, right, those, un, un, um, those unlawful things, right, you don't have the love of the Father in you. What is the love of the Father? You can read it in John, in uh, 1 John chapter, chapter chapter 5, verse 3. The love of the Father is to follow the commandments of the Most High. So if you have love for these unlawful things, you're not following the commandments of the Most High. Therefore, you don't have the love of the Father in you. You understand? 
That's why it says, love not the white man's society, which is the world. Love not the Chinese man's society. You understand? Even though they live in the white man's world, they have their own world where it, um, they eat rat, bat, whatever, whatever they do. You, you get the point, right? Don't love the heathen societies. Don't love the oppressive societies because you're going to have love for whatever is in their societies. We mean their culture, their customs. Do not love these. Yeah, as, as you know, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, Israel is a separate nation, a holy nation. So we have to remain separate from the other nations. You understand? Now let's read verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Meaning the lust of the flesh, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, um, everything that is glitter ain't gold, as we say. You understand? That is because it's shining, that is a good thing to have. You understand? Not because it is is uh, is considered cool to do, that is a good thing to do, right? Some kids think when they grow up, as, as they grow up, smoking is a cool thing. Smoking is a bad thing. But because it's viewed as cool, um, they desire it. That'd be the lust of the eyes. When they start smoking, they feel like smoking again becomes the lust of the flesh, you understand? And the pride of life. Uh, what do we call June? Pride month. They are proud to be sodomites. They are proud to show themselves naked in the streets, proud to rub fronts, you understand? And that is not of the Father. That is, um, again, Sister Jazz, like we said earlier, that is an abomination. It is disgusting to the Most High, you understand? With that said, I'm going to end the law class right here. Right? To water Sister Jazz, Sister Color for tuning in tonight, whoever was in the chat. You already know if you want to be part of the school, fill in the sign in and sign out links. Do your 90 days, get your Hebrew name. Come to, come go to war with us if you're a brother. You understand? If you're a sister, be righteous in all righteousness. You understand? Change yourself, kill your old self, be reborn in this truth. In the ISUPK, which is the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, started out of 1 West 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under commanding General Yahana. With that said, to all the brothers, Shalom, Yah Bashim Shai Brachatam. To all the sisters, Yahweh Shemar Atam Bashim Yahweh Shai. I'll see you next Tuesday for the for the Brotherhood class. I think it's starting French next Tuesday, right, from 8 to 9.30 p.m. This Friday, we have the Lashmon Kudash class taught by Officer 500 Sharia 1, right, from 7 to 9 p.m. And like every Saturday, we have the Scripture Breakdown class, ISPK Canada, you understand, from 8 to 10 p.m. And Sunday, we're going to have our podcast, the Rise Podcast 1969, starting at about 2 p.m., you understand. With that said, Shalom Israel. UPK, who and West Babylon is falling, is falling to rise no more again. Babylon is falling, is falling. Freedom is here, my friend, not just part of the mission. Yeah, our shy never come bring peace in start of the vision. So put your trust in our riches and welcome to our nation. But just the last statutes and commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision I just part of the nation Daniel get a vision Him see the black Christ It wasn't a white depiction No allegiance to Rome nor its regions Come out them religion If you want be a free man Cause the deacons them Full of demons Same situation with Rasta with Islam Holy beacon of hope for your lean And his UPK and the General Yana Every foul of the ear Every beast of the field Every creeping thing we creep on land Every mouth of the clear Loud and clear Yeah, our shy Mashiach is a black man who have fear Let him hear Time to prepare Spiritually separate from Babylon We no weak, we no fear Wheat, we no tear Come sad and my bum But him and I just part of the nation Yeah, our shy never come bring peace In start of the vision 
No put your trust in a riches and welcome to our ammunition Adjust the last statutes and commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision Just start of the nation Send evils and curses From the whole city and the beast and all churches America fall, them deserve it Home get defeated, history repeat and all the first thing hey, 400 years they work with Then desert with them, turn round and call with worthless but now the COVID lurking, them hurting And then the doctors and nurses hey, One day a tear building off it turn After the long turn No care much money you a earn If you still want money to burn One day a tear building off it turn After the long turn No care much money you a earn hey, I just thought of the mission yeah, our shine never come bring peace in start of the vision No put your trust in our riches and welcome to our ammunition Adjust the last statutes and commandments We make the decision To keep them with precision Adjust part of the mission Be a no listen to no fear you them chat could do all it out and them never be a deal. Notice, I just be a bad bitch, I get forward from with you. But I want you to be a good girl, then baby. She, she never did a features, I rate it. Never did a features, half make it. Me never did a piggy, I be a things half way, yeah, that's why me give her ratings. She never did a features, half make it. Never did a features, I rate it. Me never did a piggy, I be a things half way, yeah, that's why me give her ratings. I know every girl I like material I know every girl to get the juice in and my seed bag I know every girl me trust to cook my food Now nah, boil my tea in a tea But put the milk in a the cereal Me like a catty when me devil When we be wash for cook for clean and no fuss When she hear me get a new girl I know that me mean when me say me fight me demon Multiple wife legally no illegal Yeah, straight, me dog crazy I know every catty can be my first lady I know every press plus, but he don't pay for plus Tatiana, no fit in and no mercy Any when me say, oh luxury, dolly for nurse, baby I trouble when luxury, dolly to no lady So big up every girl with no lazy Your body big, but I your mommy don't eat it I rate it Never did a fi dress half naked Me never did a fi give her be a thing half way That's why me give her a thing She never did a fi dress half naked Never did a fi dress half rated. Me never did a fi give her be a thing half way That's why me give her a thing She na wait pan Money fi reach her and donation She make reach her man dolmation Ram run job and run But he waste gala to laugh fi leave her man but she stay strong She know say them are no friends Them are haters Them sleep with every man in a the acre Can't get nobody for stay long And what the advice from relation Baby no listen to no fear Yo, them can't keep a man Cause them never stay true Could do all it out And them never pay dues Never shut them out And them wicked and cruel, eh? Bag a man a rush, but them just a get yours Everything them have, them did a fear blows Instagram life, them new for the views Maybe that I know you do true I rate it Never did a pictures half naked Me never did a piggy or be a things half way That's why me give her ratings She never did a pictures half naked Never did a pictures all rated Me never did a piggy or be a things half way That's why me give her ratings yeah, yeah. Hey, make me go again. Make me go again. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, make me go again. Make me go again. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I won west to the death. Yeah. Fuck everything else. Big boot on me fringes. Gala tell me say she love it. We how me change it. Everything sign and seal. Dana tell me say she love the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
big boots on my fringes. Girl, I tell me, say she love it. Wait, how me change it? If I don't know you, pick it, my youth, me, I tell you no straight out. And I'm in business, yeah. Man, I move real heavy. 20 man, I jump out a couple Chevy. Well, serious. Man, I look happy. Round move to that boy in a doppy. Them a waste, man. Them a talk about me, but me no care, man. After everything else, me still be a pun. Cause your truth, me attack, and the truth, and the part, me a slave, man. Yeah. Delivered it on fire. Everything up in the ear, live wire, bonfire. But I can tell you how I. And I'm a dead soul, and then I feel rising power. Liar, Sha'ala. This year, one for all my brothers and my sisters. We get caught off early. Big boots and my fringes Girl I tell me say she really love all the changes If I don't know you became my youth Me I tell him straight out And I'm a business Yeah Big boots and my braids man Yeah Me not left me shades and Special type of gun for this occasion Hardcore Can't tip on me right hand Everything talking real neat Tell a boy I come just through him No sit this great Him a trouble for bread I am no shot Me conscience with a speak Rats and snakes them truck get slit Yeah, me give them the realness Don't start freak out When 200 million of me niggas them out Yeah, shot in a fish, shot in a mouth Rise it up, balance the soul reaper Make evil safer Yeah, well I know what I'm going to say I the truth though, I saw the thing go man Move Big boot on my fringes Girl I tell me say she love it We how me change it If I don't know you pick it my youth Me I tell you no straight out And I'm in business Big boot on my fringes Big big boot on my fringes Boot on my fringes Yeah, I'm too One West Or nothing else